Tuesday night's documentary, which followed presenter Kate Garraway's late husband Derek Draper's last year of life, was poignant to see. The host clarified that Derek decided to make the last documentary, Kate Garraway, Derek's story, after Kate had already recorded her husband's medical history since his long-term COVID diagnosis in 2020. As the show got underway, Derek, a former political lobbyist who is among the worst affected cases of COVID in the UK, admitted that he wanted to shoot this last documentary in order to be heard. And for the first time since his struggle with the illness that destroyed every organ in his body, spectators saw Derek speak as the documentary got underway. Watchers witnessed, in tragic situations, a somewhat improved Derek's health before his December cardiac arrest and subsequent January death. Kate said she didn't feel relieved when she described the instant following his passing. Many say things like, it must be a relief in a way that he's out of pain and for you, your day isn't consumed by caring for him, in an attempt to console me. Yet there's no sense of relief. Derek has taught me to never give up on standing up for what is right. That is the one thing. It's not about Derek or me, it's about creating a society in which compassion is a necessity, we will all need it. The one thing Derek has taught me is never give up fighting for what is right, she continued, shedding light on the debilitating carer system in the UK. It is about creating a society in which showing compassion is not considered a luxury, not about Derek or me, everyone is going to require it. And although it is minimized as such, it is not about someone coming by to chop up your meal, rather, it is about someone giving you a chance at life. When asked if she regretted anything, she revealed the devastating truth, it is every single minute that I didn't get to spend holding his hand because I had to fight the system, which ought to be there to catch you when you fall but feels like it's there to catch you out when you're going through it, the person said, and for that reason. I want to carry on Derek's legacy by continuing to advocate for change. Speaking about her husband's heart arrest during the holidays, Kate admitted that doctors started telling her, there is no way back. I told him, you know me, I'm going to fight this all the way, but if you can't fight anymore and what you need right now is peace, don't think about us, because he was still breathing after the cardiac arrest but could only hear. We will not suffer any harm. He had done a terrible amount out of a desire to be a husband and father. We had a different kind of love than we had before, but it was still love, even though it was crazy, chaotic, and a complete drag, there was family in the middle of all of that. Kate depicted the true nature of Derek's struggle at poignant moments as he struggled with this new version of himself. In a very moving video, Derek could be heard sobbing as he tried to get to his feet on his own. With the help of mobility therapist Cornell, Derek labored to push himself out of his chair on his own while Kate encouraged him. He shouted out, pathetic, as he failed to stand up, and then he collapsed back down, feeling a little helpless. As they expressed their affection for Kate and her family on Twitter, many were overcome with emotions. Wow, this documentary really spoke to me, my heart is truly breaking over hashtag Derek story. I believe that hashtag Kate Garraway is doing a fantastic job of bringing attention to the challenges that caregivers in this nation endure, what are your thoughts about Kate Garland? Observing the struggles she faced while taking care of Derek. For thousand pounds a week was spent on his care. It's difficult to witness his distress while receiving physical treatment. Better care for our long-term sickness is required. Strong, engrossing, truthful, and upsetting. To all caregivers, worldwide, from the beautiful soul that is at Katagaraway, thank you for bringing attention to this injustice in the social care system. Another video from November of last year showed Derek clearly upset and crying as he shouted out for Kate from the other room. Derek's cries went unnoticed in these scenes, as Kate clarified, saying, he's been extremely angry recently. He feels a little afraid, indignant, and frustrated. He continues asking, please don't leave my Jake, I don't want you to go, so I believe he's realized how vulnerable things are. It's okay. Kate soothed him as she walked into the room. You're swaying back and forth. No one is angry, dear, therefore it's okay. 
You sound like a wood pigeon, she joked, asking, what's going on in that head of yours? What's that about, she questioned, looking directly into the camera. It is really taxing to take care of him. It's okay since I know and love him, but it is really tough for a caregiver when their loved one asks, why are you being mean to me, while they are attempting to assist him. Speaking about the challenges faced by social care, Kate brought attention to the fact that 2.5 million family caregivers in the UK have had to give up their jobs at some point. As they talked about how many people, like Kate and Derek, had their entire existence flipped upside down, Kate said, it could happen to anyone. Kate continued, I feel like the tragedy is that his brain was his best friend, and now it is like his brain is his enemy as the inflammation is everywhere, alluding to Derek's keen intellect and sharp mind. You know the goal has always been that we wanted less care, the woman clarified. Our intention was to place less stress on the system. But I have to see what I can do because he requires just as much attention, if not more. She continued, it's the harsh reality that his salary is over and his expenses are up, in reference to the financial hardship brought on by his illness. Right now, the only place where the heat is on is in his room. Kate revealed that, in the absence of any additional therapy, the weekly expense of Derek's basic care comes to about £4,000. How can I afford that, she cried. How is £16,000 a month possible for anyone? Why does returning home feel like a steep drop for those who become ill? In the documentary, other caregivers were showcased, sharing their personal accounts of tending to their loved ones with various health conditions, ranging from mental health disorders to dementia. As they described what it's like to try to take care of someone, one stated, you feel like you are in a soup. The documentary revealed how much Kate pushed herself, even as she continued to host her smooth radio show and appear on Good Morning Britain. Derek's care costs more than my wage from ITV and that's before you add on a mortgage, bills, anything at all, she said to the camera. Thus, we are at a turning point that I won't pretend to be underpaid, I have a fantastic work that I adore that pays handsomely. But it's insufficient, the system has repeatedly informed us that Derek isn't sick enough to be eligible for subsidized care. Even after two or three years, my appeal has not yet been handled. During the video of Kate scurrying from Good Morning Britain to Smooth Radio, the celebrity even utilized her cab ride to attend to some medical matters and request care for Derek. After arriving at Smooth Radio, the host had a FaceTime with Derek and his caregiver to discuss his progress in recuperating while also taking note of his increased muscle strength. Producer Claire expressed concern for Kate and said, you really want her to stop as a friend, it's amazing how much she manages to juggle. When Kate almost had a stress-related heart attack in November, her co-workers told her, Kate, you're not okay. According to her producer, the mother of two had vomited on herself in the car while traveling to present smooth radio due to chest issues. She had puked on her bedroom floor at two in the morning and woke up with her arm motionless and excruciating chest pains. Although Kate's doctor persuaded her out of appearing on TV, she nonetheless allowed herself to be driven to the Good Morning Britain studio. She was hurried to the hospital before passing out at A&E. Claire gave the following explanation when speaking about the incident, Christ, the woman who you think could go on forever, can't. Nothing else mattered at that moment but Kate. Kate made sure her husband knew she was still there even throughout her radio show, and before she played Elton John's Don't Let the Sun Go Down, she checked in with her listeners. Draper and Garraway were previously invited by Sir Elton to attend his farewell Yellow Brick Road event at London's O2 last year as guests of honour. The 76-year-old musician, who had given Garraway and Draper solace during Derek's sickness, was present in the crowd at his funeral in January. In memory of Derek, he sang his ballad Skyline Pigeon, which goes, Fly away, Skyline Pigeon fly, towards the dreams, you've left so very far behind. The couple's wedding was also featured in the documentary. Derek acknowledged that when he first saw Kate, his impression was that, she's fit, but he also said that, she's lovely and caring. Kate remarked, laughing, oh, that's nice. 
I adore you enormously.